Good evening, folks. This is Diamond with the Oppenheimer Ranch Project. Coming to you Tuesday, January 2nd at 12.07 a.m. Mountain Time, 2017. Bring you a grand solar minimum update. Internet's been down all day. I'm going to wing it. After the big chill comes the big storm. We'll get to that. The coldest New Year's in 55 years means lots of lawyers and pee. <laughs> boom. That's a big boom. Whatever that means. P and lawyers. Thank God I wasn't there. New Year's brings record low temperatures, cold eyed and four deaths. In Detroit, where the mercury plunged to minus two on Sunday night, an unidentified dead man was found sitting outside the Shady Grove Church on the city's east side Monday morning. Police said the man may have frozen to death. And in Bismarck, North Dakota, where temperatures registered a bone chilling minus 27, Police believe the cold may have led to the death of a man whose body was found near the river, according to the AP. In Milwaukee, there was a couple of degrees colder than Detroit. The county medical examiner said the bodies of two men, a 34 and 50-year-old, found separately on Sunday, showed signs of hypothermia. And that's a boom. A cold one. Single-digit temperatures, snow flurries in Alabama on the first day of 2018. This freezing is going all the way down here into central Florida. Heads up, Florida. Record-shattering cold reaches all the way down to Florida. Speaking of which, look at her. Heads up. Record-shattering Arctic cold could reach as far south as Florida on Monday with freeze warnings in place from Texas to the Atlantic coast and northeastern U.S. facing another cold wave at the end of the week. Temperatures were from 20 to 30 degrees Fahrenheit below normal across the U.S. and east of the Rockies with only southern Florida untouched by the Arctic blast. Here we are. Cheyenne Weather Service Office warns extreme cold. Well, what do you expect in Cheyenne? Extreme cold causing dozens of weather mains to break throughout St. Louis County. Missouri American water workers are battling water main breaks through St. Louis County. Break after break. Officials said on Sunday they are frightened that more than 20 main breaks in the county and checking out. Oh, man. No showers. Record-breaking cold in Maine is causing problems. I wonder if it's, oh, a frozen sprinkler and water main breaks. That's what happens. Storm with hurricane force winds is developing over the Atlantic currently and is expected to hit later this week. The storm is expected to cause blizzard conditions across the Northeast and will affect as far south as Cuba. Even tropical Miami may expect to see lows 20 degrees below normal on Friday and Thursday. Weather service caution the potential for airport travel delays and also project that cities including New York, Washington could see record lows. Meanwhile, Arctic air is expected to continue pummeling the Midwest and eastern seaboard throughout the week. Potential storm scenario one destroys the east coast. Scenario two spares it. In any case, on late Thursday, snow will be spreading north with winds strengthening and tides above normal. This is from Philly all the way down to the Delmarva Peninsula, all the way up to Quebec City, all the way up here through Maine. This is eventually going to go up to Prince Edward Islands. Here's the snowfall outlook. Look how they have no depths, lightest to heaviest. They have no clue. It's either going to be shallow or deep. One to 50 inches. <laughs> the temperatures are going to be cold. There's nothing above freezing, except all the way up here in North and Halifax. Hmm. It's an odd temperature pattern. Here's the blizzard conditions. We're talking Bangor, St. John, Fredericktown, Caribou, Bathurst. Boom. That's a big boom. You're going to be buried. Where were we? In particular, high winds could cause flight to great... Delays across much of the northeast. Snow is expected to drop from northeast Florida, a subtropical area, up to Canada. Even Miami, which is fully tropical climate, is expected to see highs in the low 60s. Whew. Boom! <laughs> the storm is not expected to reach very far inland, likely stopping before hitting the Appalachian Mountains. Meanwhile, Arctic air is expected to continue pummeling the Midwest and eastern seaboard throughout the week, with a minor respite expected on Wednesday. Already wind chills as low as 58 degrees below zero have been felt across the Dakotas and Minnesota, the Weather Channel reports. Whew. There's the blizzard late in the week. Seismic outlook. Greece has been uh, 
getting hit with 5.0 after 5.0 every day, every 24 hours, heads up to Greece. Not a lot of injuries and damage with these quakes, but we are in a 25-day drought of anything six magnitude or greater. So something big is about to occur, unfortunately. It's just the nature um, of the averages. States across the U.S. see record cold New Year's and global warming is still being shoved down your throats as the rest of the world boils. Where is this nonsense coming from? Huffington Post! That's a big boom. Not. I'll leave you links to that nonsense. Could we face a mini ice age in the next 30 years? Scientists make extraordinary prediction based on the sun's natural cycles. My, what a such... I wonder why we would do that. This is coming from the work of Zarkova. Here we are going into cycle 24 into 25, and cycle 26 will be the end of the modern maximum and the deepest part of the grand minimum. And that ha starts in, in about 10 years, folks. 10 or 11 years, solar cycle 26 starts. So that is the maximum time you have to prepare before the crop loss is at maximum. That's the maximum time. 10 years, but you should be starting now. The festive cold snap and Storm Dylan's raging gales have brought a sharp dose of snowy winter misery to our shores. However, Russian scientists are saying that we're doomed. Now, what's unfortunate is Professor Zarkova, who has a PhD in astrophysics, first mooted the idea two years ago, sparking a furious row in the scientific community over the veracity of her claims. Now, a new paper published last year in Astronomy and Geophysics has reinforced those earlier findings. She claims that her team's results are 97% accurate. So this is the amount of percent accuracy that you need to start preparing now. There's a 97% accuracy that we are going into a global famine. You will not be warned about it. Now, what's sad about this article is that she talks about global warming. She says that, I hope global warming will be overridden by this effect. Eh, that's a big fail. It's, an, it's two checks she gets on my X mark. Three strikes and you're out, Zarkova. The Yakshal was an ancient Persian refrigerator that stored food and even ice long before electricity was invented, and you should know about it. This is a way to use thermal mass and capture ambient cooling through heat exchange. Ancient technique. This has been around for millennia where you can cool your food, even in a desert environment. The Yakchal did not serve as a burial ground or a place to accommodate people, but it instead fulfilled another important function amid the scorching summers with excessive heat and arid climate. The region had occupants, the Asian Persians, who needed some way to cool off and store food during the summer months. Now, you don't have to live in a high desert. You just have to have no refrigeration in the summer. And you can be using a Yakchal. And that's what happens when you need to be off-grid immediately and you didn't set up a solar system. So you should probably read up on that. Let's talk about cold times. Anita uh, Bailey, PhD, sent me an email today, which is a big boom. An amazing 750 free Kindle books went out to the world today. Thank you all who seized the opportunity to get the knowledge that you need to properly prepare for the oncoming Grand Solar Minimum. She is so delighted that the people were willing to take pre preparing for the incoming cold to heart. And this is coming right from Anita. Thanks for letting folks know. Maybe we'll save some lives out there. Amen, Anita. I think we will. Because the 750 people holding this, here's someone who just got the book. You're welcome, Sherry Waltz. We're making a video. So Cold Times got in the hands of 750 people that probably couldn't afford it. And even if they could, now they have a free digital version so they can use that $8 to buy a different book to help them prepare for the incoming cold. As total solar irradiance begins to decline, the world returns to the cold cycle as it has for the past 800,000 years. <clears throat> you want to talk about global warming? There is none. There's global cooling at different scales. 
depending on when it starts. If you start at 2017, it's going straight down. Just like the sun's output is showing us, it's going straight down. And the prediction is straight down to levels we haven't seen since 1700. That's going to mean an uptick in earthquakes and volcanism worldwide. And we're going to be talking about it part four and five of John Casey's series, which will be coming out this week. And that's a big boom. Guys, I hope you got something out of the video. An amazing 750 Kindle books gotten in the hands of the general public that will survive and thrive during the oncoming cold and the grand solar minimum. And you should too. Peace out.